despite how small this thing is being, how heavy they are. <laughs> oh my God, that scared the <laughs> me. I'm gonna bleep that out because that scared me. Dude, I got that on video. No way. Hey guys, I'm gonna just jump in here at the beginning and preface this. Um, this is probably gonna get a lot of new viewers, so this channel is dedicated to posting the craziest content when it comes to racks, rollovers, recoveries. This one was new to us, the lithium battery explosion. There's been a couple already now nationwide, and each one of them are like this, where they just burn for days. No one really knows how to tackle these things yet. It's it's crazy stuff, so I try to make this video as interesting as possible. It's still ongoing today. Not the fire, but the job itself. This was done last Thursday. We came back Friday. We came back Saturday to actually upright the thing at the fire station lot. And yesterday they rented our telehandler to start pulling stuff out of it. So complicated, crazy job. Well, this video would be an absolute bore to just keep the camera running for, you know, 13 hours every single day. And yeah, we were there 13 hours the first day from noon until 1 a.m. So I chopped it up as best as I could to make it interesting and cut out most of the fluff and leave all the, the cool action-y stuff and cinematic stuff. So let me know what you guys think. And if you guys like this kind of crazy recovery content, consider subscribing. We finally hit 154K, so thanks to everyone that's currently subscribed. And with that, I'll let you guys get back to the video. All right, well, guys, you see that big fire truck? We got a huge rollover behind it for one of my accounts. Alex just beat me, so this is what it looks like when we get to a scene. We got traffic up the Ying Ying right here on the uh, Long Beach 47 freeway. Let's go check it out. There's Alex now. So check it out here, Container City at again. Oh yeah, that's smoking. We're walking to the scene because uh, they don't want our trucks next to it. If you see the battery, it's smoking. This thing weighs what? These ones are like 60,000? 60K. So they're telling us to stand back actually. I don't know if it's leaking or what, but these generators are no joke. Out of the way as well. Okay. But uh, once we actually know what's going on, then We'll let you be able to overturn it. Check out what you're doing. That's, That's fine. So what we'll do is we'll just park on the shoulder in front of that car, so that way you guys yeah, can. Yeah, you guys are good back where you're at. That way you guys can go in and out without our trucks on the way. Okay. We can't even be near it. So. Thank you, sir. Very Appreciate active it. scene right now, man. Maybe we can get the drone over there. Can you get the drone over there? I'm pretty sure I can. Let's do it. We're going to be here indefinitely for quite some time, which gives us uh, some working time to get a game plan. Because this is our account. We're used to lifting those all the time. Very heavy, man. 60,000 pounds, all concentrated. Let me know when you take off so I can uh, sync it with this. Okay. Sweet. We got the drone up. Since we can't physically go over there, Alex is gonna fly over. See if you can zoom in and see the smoke, cause that thing looked pretty crazy. There you go. Can you see the smoke from there? Not really. It comes in waves. Just disconnect the negative terminal. <laughs> right? <laughs> <laughs> Turn it around so everyone can see how the traffic is jammed up on this bridge. This is the bridge right here uh, that connects the 710 and the 110 freeways. All these exits lead to different parts of the ports, the ports of San Pedro and Los Angeles. So a heavy commerce area, shutting this down is gonna be a, a logistical nightmare. Look at that. All these drivers trying to make their deliveries to get in and out of the ports to deliver all your guys' products. This is where it all funnels from. Crazy, we got here as fast as we did, huh? Really fast. The one that you get closer? No. Let me use mine. All right, I'm gonna try to get a better view for you guys. Now, just looking at that, you wouldn't expect that thing to weigh 60,000 pounds. It's 100% solid. I'll throw in a cool area shot right here for you guys. But uh, we did one job where we loaded like 65 of these things. 
inside of an absolutely tiny yard. It was like Tetris on steroids. So we're very familiar with these things and, and how heavy they are. And right here, I have Mr. Yeah, I know himself standing by in truck 66. Shoot, that smoke was probably from his cigarette. And then if you guys check out right here, they got to funnel everyone off from Navy Way because look at that traffic. That's that famous bridge right there. Call me TMZ because only I can get exclusive access like this while everyone's coned off. You get like a much better visual of, despite how small this thing is being, how heavy they are. Oh my God, that scared the me. I'm gonna bleep that out because that scared me. Dude, I got that on video. So I just caught this thing blowing up, man. Oh shoot. I apologize for the yelling. You guys will, I'll bleep that part out, but it was loud like a bomb man I cannot believe I just caught that those firefighters are so wise Alex and I were gonna just scope it out could you imagine if we had been there this is why they cone stuff off um, we did a video a couple of them of some tankers and this is why it's better to be safe than sorry a lot of people were like that's overkill uh, why do you have the lane shut down this is why I, dude, I caught that. Hey, good looking out on having to stand back. Imagine yeah. if we were right there. Uh, you, can you, you can't go back, can you? Yeah. Yeah. L let me plug it into a... Uh, if you can, uh, if you can show that to the... We're gonna, are you driving this? I'm at, driving uh, this okay. one. Okay, we're, we're going to need you to back uh, up with, with this guy. Anyway. Okay, we got to move our trucks even further back, guys, but, uh, wow. That was something, man. Let me land this drone and then I'll get back to you guys. My last update was they might let this burn for a couple of days. I guess there was one locally on the fit, well not locally, but in by Vegas, towards Vegas on the 15 freeway that they did that. They let it burn for a couple of days. They said because of the uh, contents, the way it works is dousing it in water won't really put it out. It can stay ignited underwater. So there's no other option because of how huge it is. All the components to just let it burn. Burn baby, burn. So I figured, you know, I got some time. Let's throw the drone up here and get you guys that exclusive Pepe's Toe content. See how that looks like inside. That is intense, man. This is uh, lithium batteries, the stuff for the future, no? We've been here for a few hours now already, if you can see. Let me just zoom in really quick. Where those fire trucks are, we're just to the left of that. That's where I'm standing. Everything's a ghost on here. So all these off ramps, all these exits, everything is completely shut down. I think they had to evacuate one of these buildings too. It's just that intense. I've never seen this freeway shut down from both directions like this. Like I mentioned, these ports right here that you see, these millions of containers in every way which direction this is where they get funneled to and from all over the world so to shut this down is a huge news really 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 big big stuff you can see the container itself isn't even huge it's not even a, a full 40 footer crazy stuff guys there's talks of um clearing the roadway and letting it burn off site by using our trucks to drag it so the fire department's working on a game plan of, with their suits, they use our rigging equipment, pull out our cables about 100 feet and Alex and I will operate this stuff remotely. Sounds crazy, you've never been done before uh, over here. We'll get back to you if that plan does come into play.
You got it? When I was doing a little narration, so it was up to the side, but I, I, I know I caught it. So I was gonna do a walk around on the side so I can like talk about the dimensions mm -hmm. and how heavy it is. Check this out. Do you need help? I think I got it. Okay. Give me a little slack. Yeah, sure. Thank you, I'm gonna hold that up for you while you do that. I think I got it. I hope so. He's pulling again. Hold on, sorry. He's pulling it. Go ahead. It's cross threading. It's cross threading? Yeah, go down a little bit. There you go, there you go, that's straight. Right there. Good? Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. You guys want to do me a favor? You might want to get behind a truck or something because I think it's going to blow. Can to blow again? I don't want any scrap matter to come out and hit you by your face or whatever. Hey, Josh. They're going to get the air, uh, the air helicopter to douse it. Yeah. Yeah, but well, we can't fly the drone when that happens. Problem. Get that blow up, man. It's going viral, baby. It's going viral. I'm going to channel, man. I need to channel. Need you posted to it already? Uh, okay, you guys can't hear it, but it's starting to blow again. It's making a bunch of crackling sounds. You think it'll reach the tractor? No, huh? It could. Gonna toast that whole thing. Yeah, it's gonna toast the whole thing. If that fire gets big enough, it's gonna take that tractor with it, which has huge diesel tanks, a DEF tank, the oil pan. This has the potential to go from bad to worse real quick, man. I mean, luckily we got fire here already. Yep, there you go. Man, I would love to get a shot from that side. I could not have gotten a more perfect angle view. I was looking at the container. Well, fire department got here before, so we wouldn't have been there. They wouldn't have led us next to the casualty. All right, so this thing's still raging, man. We're gonna be here for a long time. Uh, I was sending the fire right now. My footage, they wanna use it as a training protocol. I guess they were telling the cops to evacuate the people right here and uh, they were giving them pushback and this is why. Now, if you see the footage, it's gonna look like an implosion. It's just the pressure popped open the lid, but that could have went really bad with all the shrapnel and stuff going everywhere. This is why it's always better to be safe than sorry. I'm gonna turn off my truck while we wait and I'll get back to you guys when we're ready to work. So it looks like the fire department's gonna want us to block the only off ramp right here. What big flipper. Oh my God, dude, I could imagine all these people probably hate us right now. It's not us guys, trust me. It's for your safety. Oh my God, they got the other side blocked off too. Well, that makes sense, I guess. So all that pressure blew up in the container, but there's still a lot of contents in there. I mean, it's a 60,000 pound massive battery, so plus the tractor. Well, they figure out how to, how to contain that. I guess they're doing this for safety, so no one, no one goes down this road. 
I mean, I feel for them, but what are they possibly doing? Even if they were to make it up here, bro, this is the wrong way. Yeah. What are they doing? We actually got a call right now from the news. They want to interview us. I guess this thing's getting crazy traction. I mean, 60,000 pound lithium battery exploding on the freeway is not something you see every day, but the boy's about to be famous. But while Alex and I stay in a big flipper to pull down, we got pretty much a little mini movie studio here. <laughs> it's like 10 G's worth of camera equipment right here between your drone and Canon. Easy. And my editing laptop. I want to work this job already, guys. Maybe the explosion will make it lighter, too. <laughs> Standby time for days. Waiting for that water helicopter. So this is the makeshift uh, turnaround for all these guys. This is the last little record of it before we start our work, but I just want to show you guys how insane this is to U-turn on this little bridge. You see all those huge ships, those are the big ships, the barges where all the containers come in from overseas. And there's like probably millions of them, man. To shut all this down is absolutely insane. All these guys are already on a time crunch to get in and out of the ports to make their delivery. So, I mean, so sad. How much commerce is gonna be affected by this? And that thing is still raging, raging. This is how far back we have to be. It keeps popping. I haven't heard another huge explosion, but I mean, it's cackling. So Hulk's still on standby. And we'll see what happens. Okay guys, it is officially nighttime. I'm clocking uh, 10 o'clock p.m. We've been here for 10 hours, believe it or not. And I'm gonna show you how far away we have to be. Whoa, it's freaking dark. How far we have to be away from the casualty. I'm in sport mode on the drone going about 10 miles per hour. Still not there yet, still not there yet. And there's our prize. Let's get close to the uh, intersection. Wow, the fire's still burning, guys. The fire rises. Wow, this thing looks like a movie scene, huh? With that background. It was a little dark, but I bumped the ISO. Let's see if... uh. Right? Look. <laughs> just one little spot. It's just the other side of the battery, huh? Battery level. Let's land it in the fire. <laughs> All right. Battery level on the drone is low, so I'll end this with the cool little speedy montage.
is uh, day two of the of the battery uh, fiasco. Uh, this time they requested one uh, one truck. Uh, Josh right now is uh, busy taking care of another another rollover, but uh, they uh, tasked us to separate the tractor from the chassis. guys uh this is horrible horrible in the sense that what a waste of a day so this is day number two we were on scene until 1 a.m 1 a.m waiting waiting and waiting they were gonna send um i guess because of the lithium they, they needed a special out-of-state response team and this and that they never came, so we had to leave. You got another rollover. At least we got that, but um, now we're back the next day and we're sidelined. If you guys see right here, there's an SA Recycling. So apparently, it took hours upon hours of planning yesterday because of how dangerous this is to the point where the governor was involved all just for the next day to hire a couple of forklifts from a recycling site <laughs> to do the job so what they're trying to do is they're trying to split the tractor from the the chassis container like they've been here for like about an hour at least trying to do it i don't know why uh so what they're doing is they split the tractor from the container i guess the goal is to then split the container from the chassis and use all city equipment to take the lithium battery to some site somewhere, I think a fire department site. And these are the uh, scrap metal forklifts they're going to be using. So very, very, very anticlimactic compared to yesterday. But hey, at least my drone footage made it all over the news, right? They got it split. What, the tractor? Yeah. Oh, okay. But they're trying to split the battery? What are they trying to do? You know what, man? I don't know. Did they see the cables at the bottom? Uh, they're just trying to deadlift the whole thing with the chassis. I don't know what they're... Split the battery to the chassis. Yeah. That's what they want to do. I mean, bro, on paper, it seems easy. It's just a container. There's four locks. Yeah. That's really heavy, man. That's why they're backed up to it. Yeah, I'll post some pictures. I'm not sure if I mentioned it in yesterday's, uh, when I was doing this yesterday. But these batteries that weigh 60,000, they're, they're so deceptively heavy. That's why they're backed up to it. Alex and I were doing them off the side. Oh, I did mention it. That container yard that we filled up like 60 of them. Leans your trucks. I mean, they're stupid heavy. That, that's an understatement. So I don't know how they're going to get these forklifts that have six inch, you know, plates right there. I guess just ram it and hopefully it goes underneath. But if so, then what was the point of all yesterday, all this safety debriefing and whatnot? You'll see the 47 freeway here that connects the ports is still shut down in both directions. We were hired by that special company yesterday because of our expertise. 
And coincidentally, I have the contract for this police area in this intersection. This is OPG territory. Funny enough, this is how it works. The freeway, going that way, and the opposite way is CHP, California Highway Patrol. From right there to this intersection is OPG, which is LAPD. Since my last update, didn't think it would take this long still. I think they finally managed to separate the chassis. And the reason why on standby is because we still have to upright the chassis itself and the tractor. They're only taking the battery. I don't even think this, is that even rigged to anything? It is. Oh yeah, they got the chassis loose right there. Look, it's moving. I do have to wonder though, this position, because there's no room for it to go behind them. See if they were, ooh. They caught it with their underlift. They landed on his underlift? Yeah, they put the underlift out as a catch. Look. See? I had just mentioned that I was just going over it right now that they're using the underlift as a catch and why. Disconnected already? They got it disconnected, but now they're stuck with it. They can't do anything with it because the way their trucks are positioned. Now, if that forklift wasn't there, they have rotators. What they could do is just lift that thing up sky high, rotate it in between their trucks, and drop it right here where that forklift is at. Look, see, Alex, if you see right here, they got it split, and that forklift is raised, but I don't know what they're going to do with it from here because it can't, it can't land because of their trucks. Looks like he folded in his underlift, but it's still not going to land right there. Why don't they just set it down there? Unless they're going to use that. Oh, way. I know what they're going to do. They're going to disattach. Mm -hmm. The forklift is holding it in place. They're going to drive forward. See? And then the forklift is going to lower it. Just like I suspected. <coughs> they disattach to drive it out of the way. Next is this guy. And they might just keep it as a control, but... At least I figured out the plan. Whoa! Shock load. They just dropped the chassis on the on the forklift, and it's in between the forks. Shock, shock loaded the boom. Okay, I get it. You got a low battery. Relax. All right, guys, I caught the flip at least. I'm going to land the drone and charge it. So this is the part I was alluding to in the, in the beginning where I said, you know, we lost a job to fire department. So this is on day two after we spent 13 hours on scene on the first day. The political sticky tape was out of this world. They ended up getting the Coast Guard involved, uh, EPA, DOT, all the alphabet agencies. It was intense. I guess not just because of how dangerous the fire was, how volatile um, this lithium stuff is, but because of its location, it was right by the ports, one of the busiest ports in the world. By the drone footage, you guys seen all the containers in the back. That's why I get this crazy content, I always say. Um, it just comes with the territory. We're right by the ports where these things come in and out by the tens of thousands every day. So to shut that part of the freeway down for two days is just, it's insane. You guys ever see like those uh, Canada TV shows on Netflix? I think it's Highway to Hell or, or Highway 411. And one of them, the intro was like, shutting down is not an option. So they got to clear the roadway because it's like the busiest commerce freeway up there. It's like that here. Well, all these containers come in with stuff from everything you buy come in from right there. They load them up on these chassis drivers and they exit the ports. This particular spot at Navy Way is a hot spot. This is, this is where they come in and out of from the various, you know, all the different berths right there. So to shut it down for two days again, it's just, it's, it's hard to comprehend unless you're from here. 
but it wasn't just this part of the 47 freeway. This one connects the 710 to the 110 freeway. Those are the two freeways to get to the ports. And this is the connector at the end of uh, the 710. So besides shutting that part down, um, they had underneath the surrounding streets shut down too. And I think a building or two close by just as a precaution in case this thing ignited again, exploded again, and the fumes. These fumes I was told, that white smoke, it's like a mixture of carbon dioxide, carbon monoxide, sulfur, um, everything poisonous to the human body pretty much. So that's why it was like this big, huge thing. And I was told that ended up being the main deciding factor and why they wouldn't let us touch the container on day number two. The fire department, you'll see, did the whole job with their masks on, full fire gear and everything. So I, I get it, it just sucks for us. You know, Alex and I were ready to tackle this. We know these containers in and out. I threw up the pictures earlier, but we did, we've done hundreds of these, I'm not even kidding. One job alone was like 60 something containers of these ones. And then that job got us in contact with another company where we did like another 40 of these. I'm not too familiar with the technology. I, I think I was told on some of these, they use them to like power casinos, hospitals, big offices, whatever, but, but I mean, this is what happens when they catch on fire. It turns into a, like a, almost a national emergency. So all that to say, I guess, you know, that's why fire department is the one that got the job on day two. But on day three, we actually got to tackle the container itself. After this part that um, you're seeing right now, so they ended up using two fire department trucks plus some recycle um, company forklift to load this thing, but they couldn't upright it right there. And back at the lot, I guess it was too heavy, whatever, to upright. So we did get the job on day three, and that's where the video ends. Alex and I ended up uprighting the thing right there. And day four actually is not filmed because my dad was there, which is yesterday. Today's Monday. Yesterday was Sunday, day four of this job. They rented our telehandler so they can start pulling stuff out, um, the cores, batteries, whatever. So they're going to be renting that for a couple of weeks while this thing gets dismantled. That's how crazy you know, difficult and sticky these jobs are. It's not just you come in and attach your stuff and manhandle it like we do other containers. The sensitivity levels are off the charts, something I haven't seen before. Hope I don't get again, because now I know, I mean, these are week long jobs. So luckily, despite all this huge hoopla, no one was injured. Uh, truck was damaged, obviously, when it rolled over and the container's toast, but zero injuries, which is a miracle considering, you know, that explosion. If there was people close by, if we were on top of it, it could have went a thousand different ways. But at least, you know, we got some cool news coverage out of it. I know a lot of people have been sending me the news links from all the local stations and even some national ones. So right about now, if I time this right, they should be getting done loading the container onto the fire department truck. So I'll let you guys get to day three now. Yeah. But is somebody coming for that? Yes. Oh. No, you see the two lines up there? Those are catch lines. 
the one that's going to be flipping it is uh, the green line which goes there that's going to be my lift and then to help me spike it down it'll be this one which will be this one see There it is, guys. Oh, that's from the differential. I guess it was from the, the breather hole. Yeah. So since it was there, it must have accumulated in the like drum. Like yeah. So this is your uh, all Oh yeah. Look like you take care of your stuff, so you all got it all down there. Oh, thank you. Watch it, guys. How I'm gonna swing. Two years. Two years. Class A, yeah.
Good. Yeah, huh? Oh, that's way bent. Hold it. Wait. It's not gonna lock. It's too bent. Can you put pressure on it? With what? With the underlift. What? I don't have an underlift. Huh? I don't have an underlift. Way off. Unless I put a piece of wood on this side. Yeah. And see if it, it balances out, right? Yeah. All right. I could raise the rear end and twist it. No, 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 no. Check this out. How do you do it, Spider? Put a chain over there so it won't move over. Let me put some air. Let me move it over there. Where? Over there on that side. Over there. Yeah? Yeah. Here, pass this. Pass this chain through that hole. Which one? Over here. Here, pass it. Oh. Over here. That one? Yeah. Well, it's going to go over this one, no? Oh, here. Just get it from the middle. Oh, the middle? Yeah, well, that way it's centered. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, right here. Look at it. Right. Get yeah. it from the bottom. All right. Try it right there, spider, maybe. Yeah, as long as it doesn't go off. Okay. So he'll just come back and then The chassis twisted. I don't think so. We'll see, you might have to drag. Right. Got those brakes a lot. Spider! That hose is busted. Huh? That hose is busted. What do you mean? For the brakes. You see? Try to move it back, see if it moves. You know what? I think the fireman f***ed it up when they put the forks. Because it wasn't like that. Well, I know. Yeah. I was fast, bro. Thank you. <laughs> they, they kept saying, they were like, hey, how long is it going to take? How long is it going to take? I was like, but this is out there, like 45 minutes to raise that tractor. Yeah, I wish we would have got the, that, uh, that battery. I was really hoping for that. Are you going to push it in that center divider? Push it. Hey, spider, push it wherever you need to. Just All push right? it in that center divider. Good. Okay. You're okay. Okay. Are you gonna hang out or are you taking off? I'm taking off. Thanks, man. I really thank you, man. appreciate it. Andy. Andy. Yeah, nice yeah, to meet you, Andy. Yeah, thank you. Okay. Okay. Awesome. Yes. I think I bet you a couple. You've been here a little while. Yeah, okay. two years. You you drive the Hulk ever? No, he uh, Josh drives Hulk. I drive oh, Flipper. Okay. This one. Right. Son. Yeah, yeah. But well, he's the other guy. Yeah, good job, man. Appreciate Those it. guys yeah. are the ones they do all the uh, the YouTube. Up all the heavy stuff. The oh, yeah, I know they're always. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Andy. All right. The scene is clear. The four, uh, 47 should be open up uh, shortly here, and uh, the port should be uh, open. All right, guys, let me say bye to everybody and pretty much call it a day. Thank you. You good? Yeah. Okay, uh, you're going to just leave it there, huh? Uh, Port PDs is going to stand by it. My guy's going to go take it off and then come back for it. It's out of the way. It's in the center lane. You're going to come back today or tomorrow? No, oh, today. Yeah. Oh, yeah, he's because uh, we're in Wilmington, so he's not too far. He'll drop this one off. So what, how are you going to move it? You're at the same thing, but you want to you fork it. Got it. Okay. And then I'll be taking off to that one another call. Okay, thank you. Thank you, man. All right, guys. Thank you, guys. Peace.
back to day three of the container drop, guys. Day three, if you could believe that. For that. So we just went over with the Coast Guard uh, emergency services response and EPA and who knows what else about our game plan on this one. To Alex and myself, this is such a standard, routine, basic, easy container upright. But because it's lithium, uh, there's still a chance it can reignite, catch on fire again. So we went over our game plan twice, set it in stone. They got readers up there, rebreathers, all kinds of stuff. Let's get in position. All right, guys, so where you see my camera facing, that's the blast zone. They call it blast zone. That is why we have our trucks parked in this position. Should make for a really easy job, actually. There's obviously a lot of uh, political sticky tape because of the nature of the load. If you guys can see from my side, I'll take you back right now. It blasted this thing like crazy. And the reason they have a metal plate on it is they're worried that because of the heat, that when we lift it up, that the batteries will go through. But I've never seen that happen. I've seen contain. I see containers take a beating for a living but because there's even a slight chance uh, they got to take that precaution Alex and I will be using dual brand new Bailey's platinum slings for our lift and our catch so this is going to turn into our lift once it's airborne this bottom corner these straps are rated at 40,000 pounds in a working in a vertical working low limit so we got four of them. Ah, perfect. So what I'm doing here is just putting some tape so this thing doesn't ride down. This just prevents it so once the lift turns into the lift and the catch into the catch, because right now they're both equal, they're going to be equal coming up. I don't want the edges of these to get caught. Yeah, they're platinum slings and they take a beating, but this is how you prolong the life of them. Beautiful guys. T minus 60 seconds until liftoff. Alex is good, I'm good. Lift off. We'll stand right here, I guess, wherever he says. Go for it, Alex. Hold it. Okay, keep going. I'll let you catch up. Start going out with your lift, your catch. Mine, mine's really low. Make sure it's even right there. Let's just go catch only. Catch only.
I have no tension. It's done. Well, that was fun. And that's what a 60,000 pound lithium ion battery looks like slash generator hybrid. Good stuff. Now we just take off our rigging and this three day saga is complete. Just like we thought the wall held up. Now, could you guys imagine for the super fans that stick around to the end or who saw it on the news that know this happened two days ago, just imagine if they let us do this from the get go. Obviously after the explosion was contained, we could have done this that very night. Had these ports open up in no time. But that's the issue with this uh, lithium stuff. It's not like a regular fire where you could just douse it with water and it'll go away. Especially how huge it is. And just like that, we're out of here, guys. Peace. Hello, YouTube, and thank you guys for making it to the end here on another edition of Josh's Breakdown. So this one was pretty cool to us. Um, a lot of brand new things. Obviously, that lithium explosion is just something we're not used to seeing these fires, especially on a huge, huge, huge um, commerce freeway like the 47, which connects all those little areas in the ports. Well, the drone footage that I captured with the explosion, it just, I, I couldn't time that if I tried a million times. We use the drone all the time for um, to get cool angles, for insurance purposes, for training purposes. We like to review the footage afterwards with the guys, all kinds of stuff. So I just happened to be doing my narration at that time when boom. So I uploaded it to Instagram and instantly I was getting calls from Fox, CBS, KTLA, all the local news stations. I made a few of them. I know a lot of you guys have seen it because you guys were commenting it on uh, some of my recent videos that you guys saw me on the news. So that's pretty cool for the exposure. But luckily and by some miracle, absolutely no one got hurt. The explosion was loud, it was crazy, but by that time the fire department had already sent, um, coned off a section of the freeway and funneled everyone off. So kudos to that and thankfully again, no one got hurt. So this recovery job itself was a nightmare. Today is the 2nd of October, Wednesday and the job is still going on right now. On Sunday, which would have been day four, because Alex and I, you know, reflipped it on, on Saturday, day three, but day four, my dad took them the telehandler and they're still using it now. They project to be using it until I believe Friday. So I think next Friday. So they wanted to rent it for two weeks. They're gonna use that to pull everything out of the container and make it empty. Once that happens, it'll be like day 20 by that point. Alex is gonna go back solo to put the container onto an Orlando and we're gonna take it to the recycling plant to, to scrap. We deal with these containers all the time, all day, every day. Since that job, it came in last Thursday, today's Wednesday, so six days ago is when it first came in officially. We've had three rollovers and it's been super slammed. So the fact that I even have this video out today is just a miracle. I wanted to rush it out while it was still fresh and people were asking questions. I thought it'd be cool instead of waiting till like the weekend or another week. I had three days of footage to go through. This was nonstop painstaking. So if the coloring's a little bit off or the blur job, you know, bear with me guys. I'm, I'm a one man team over here. I don't have an editor or anything as you guys know, if you're fans of the channel. So it's all me solo. So if you guys like what you see, show me some love, consider liking, sharing, subscribing. I try to do some cool things like the little slow-mo, the little cinematic stuff, the sound effects. I'm trying to make these videos really, really captivating so it's not just monotonous and boring. There's humor involved in all that on top of being a wild recovery that you just don't get on the other channels. So let's go to the day one. Uh, the customer that actually flipped the container is the one that called us. That's one of our accounts. We've done dozens upon dozens of these lifts for them. They come in from the ports and sometimes they come in inside of an enclosure itself, that battery you saw in an extended enclosure. So right here, I'll throw up a picture of what that looks like. And what we do is we pull them out of these enclosures to put them on other trailers, you know, move them around within the yard. So we're very familiar with these things. So they're the ones that have called us originally. We got there fast, but fire department had already been there only because traffic was so horrible. So as you see, we weren't able to even touch it on day one. And then um, some emergency services company got involved, this specialized company that handles these lithium fires. 
and they hired me as well. So even if I didn't get hired by them or the company, I'd also probably get it through OPG, which is, you know, the official police garage. That's that street right there that I flipped on. That's that territory. So it seems like there's a lot of factors that were going to give me this job. It just it wasn't in the cards because of the toxicness, the smoke, the fumes. It was just too volatile. But I, I do believe in the end, as frustrated as we were waiting for 13 hours on day one, that it was the right call to wait until it kind of died down. So when they called us back on day two, I thought we were going to get it. That's why I was there with Alex. A few hours more of standby time and then we realized, okay, we, we're definitely not gonna get it now. So Alex stood behind because he had to flip the tractor over once everything was out of the way. That was like close to midnight. So this was a ton of manpower, a ton of hours on this call. And you know what? We still ended up getting it on Saturday. We, we uprighted that container and that, that thing is heavy. They're deceptively heavy. If you guys are in the industry uh, or transport these, you'll know right away how heavy these are. You know, the title's not clickbait. The lithium battery did explode. It is like 60,000 pounds with the container. Once they empty everything out, check this out though. Um, I asked how much is it gonna weigh? Cause they needed to know if I send two rotators in two weeks when it's done. The container itself is gonna weigh like 10 to 14,000 pounds with some minor components in it. So that stuff is dense, super dense and super heavy. So I don't think I'll make a video of that part when we do go back because it's pretty much just gonna be an empty container lift that we transport a mile down. In fact, it's going to the same place where those uh, forklifts came from. Before I got there and I started recording, Alex had beat me there. I think they had like three or four forklifts, those big ones you saw assisting the fire department. They were going to, I guess, somehow use the four forklifts and, and try to lift it up, which you can't really see from that footage because Alex is a bit further back is, is before they, they lifted it up to put it on the trailer, what they did is they put a giant metal plate that runs parallel to the container. And you could see it on day three, that's what we set it on. They put that underneath the container first, and then they put wood under that to crib it, and then the fire department, I guess, basketed it. They used their chains to go underneath and lift everything up, and that's how they transported it, because they were afraid that with the weight of everything, it would come out. Um, again, as a precaution, I, I would have bet my career on it. That wouldn't have happened, and it didn't happen, as you saw on day three when we lifted it. But again, these things are, there's a lot of unknown variables, and it's fun technology, right? The future, there's always gonna be new technology, but when it gets like this, it turns into a national crisis. I mean, it goes all over the news, shuts down commerce for days. So it's interesting to see how this is gonna affect policies. And I'm not even kidding already, been getting contacted by legislation people to, hey, can we use your footage because we wanna propose a bill to ban this stuff. And this is not a political video. I'm not gonna say if I'm for or against it. I know my, my fan base is probably gonna argue this in the comments. I already saw on Instagram, this is why electric should be banned. Well, the tractor itself wasn't electric. That's not what caught on fire. A lot of people thought it did. This is just a lithium battery. Um, and in fact, I, I'm a bit confused on it because as I'm aware, there's generators and there's batteries and this is supposed to be a hybrid. From what I've been told, these things power like casinos and small hospitals and whatnot. They use them for that stuff and they, they transport them in times of crisis as backup power. So I'm not too sure this specific one, what it's used for. I just know now that if it catches on fire, it's a huge, huge thing. So I'm sure this is gonna start a lot of training protocols for various agencies, you know, on how to best handle this and, and how to prevent this from shutting down freeways for days. So all in all, a fun job. I mean, you know, not many companies can afford to throw two rotators and all that equipment for days tied up at a time while still handling everything else. But Alex and I, you know, at Pepe's, everyone here, we're always up for the task, whatever the customer needs, we're there. So I did my two mini breakdowns within the video um, using the green screen to assist with that part. So this one wouldn't be too long. I'm trying to make the video just under an hour long. It seems to be the sweet spot. I do want to shout out one thing. I, I've been working on this one shirt for ever since that excavator video, what the one where I said if it was easy, someone else would be doing it. Finally did it. I'll put it right here behind me, but let me know what you guys think of it. I took some of my favorite, most difficult jobs over the years put it on a shirt with my slogan. And for the whole month of October, I'll put the code here, but it'll be in the description too. You guys get 10% off the entire site, anything you want site-wide. So hope that helps and I'll let you guys get to it. Until the next one, peace.